I'm Mark Trevill, and welcome to To Your Health. This is our ninth season. The show is produced by the Northwest Mental Health Authority here in Torrington, Connecticut. Today, a great guest, Becca Atkins. Hi. Thank you for making the trip up. Becca Atkins is the director of Second Step Players, and it is a wonderful project because it involves people, it involves people in recovery, mm -hmm. and it's this troop of I want to call them professional actors, even though yeah. the money may not be there, but the, True. the sincerity, the heart, and the talent of some of the things I've seen on tape, yeah. just fantastic. So thanks for sh uh, sharing that with us today. It's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. We need to uh, establish first off what actually this project is all about, because okay. before the show, you and I were talking about the importance of the core of this show mm -hmm. is the people involved in it, right. and what it means to them, and how they grow from it. And as an audience audience participant, you know we're just looking at a TV, uh, not a TV show, a uh, a production, right? And we're only seeing the outward aspect, the entertainment aspect, but there's more to the core. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah, definitely. There's a lot more. <laughs> so where does where did this project begin? Where did it begin? First, let me say what it is. Sure. Um, our theater troupe is made up of adults who've been diagnosed with psychiatric disorders, ranging from anxiety and depression, manic depression, schizophrenia, and we function as a social rehabilitation program um, rather than as a theater troupe. But we really kind of ignore the social rehab. It happens <laughs> naturally right. in the course of um, producing theatrical projects. Absolutely. And it started back in 1985. Um, uh, Ronna Kyle, who works in the mental right. health system today, yeah. and S.J. Williams. Previous um, guest of our show. Yep, got together and um, started this very small nonprofit agency with just a few people. Uh, and they were doing sketch comedy that was ripped off of like Carol Burnett mm -hmm. and not writing um, their own material at the time, but just to give people an act, a way to act and to work on projects. And that grew into Second Step Players over the years. So now we are state funded by the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services as social rehab, and we do theater about mental health issues now, uh, which we have for a lot of years, and we also do music projects. So the performances are the icing on the cake, but what we're funded to do is actually create the projects, our rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. And it's um, open to whom? Do you, need, do you necessarily need to have a disorder? You don't have to bring a doctor's note, no. That's what I was getting at. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes our programs, you know, you have to have a criteria to be sure. involved in them because it's a state-funded program. Right. Um, but in the respect of recovery, uh, to bring what you have forward and to work on right. that and to gain, whether it's the uh, self-esteem, um, learning new skills, uh, socialization, yeah. uh, just being in front of an audience. You know, that's, Which is scary. Oh my gosh. You know, learning that's how scary. to um, do something terrifying, you know, be scared and do it anyway. And do it well. <laughs> you, you need to have in your life. I mean, it's scary to start a new job. Yes. It's, it's scary to do normal life things. So when you develop that skill of I am scared and I'm going to do it because I have support, mm -hmm. you've got it made. Right. And so. that's, that's the core essence of what the pro program yes, it is. is helping to teach. Yes. Um, it just happens to be in a wonderful, fun, visible format. It is. Which is theater. And you don't have to have, um, you don't have to be receiving services from the state to participate with us, which is a thing that makes it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, we work with volunteers too. So we don't really care whether you're um, receiving services from the state or whether you just have a psychiatric problem and you're living in the community. Oh, that's That's great. a fringe um, the element of folks that get left yeah. out. Yeah. If you're diagnosed and you have enough money to survive on your own, mm -hmm. it's hard to get services. It's That's harder. Right. That, no, that is true. And so um, we don't we don't discriminate there. You know, the one thing I think uh, that I've even found difficult in the uh, recent past, uh, <laughs> meaning this this year, there's there's a lot of programming for people who are really ill. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of help out there, and there's a lot of sincere efforts for clinicians and social workers and nurses to help people that have chronic mental illness. Right. If you're just struggling with something that can be taken care of on an outpatient basis, there's really not too much for you to do right. in the heavy clinical sense, and yet you want to get involved and you want to do something. But, you know, your place is probably not necessarily with a chronic population. You need to get involved. You need to get involved in uh, community things. Yeah. Um, your church group. Um, I, your I'm not sure local what. theater. Local church. theater. But with that support, and, yeah. and here this project 
seems absolutely wonderful. Now, we're talking about a funded program, but how big of a staff are we talking about here? Not small. A lot. Small, small. Very small. Yeah, small. Right now, for Second Step Players, and we have two programs in our agency, but what my program is just Second Step Players. Yeah. Okay. And um, we have the executive director of the agency who does both programs. Mm -hmm. I'm the director of Second Step Players. Mm -hmm. And then we have another full-time employee who drives the van and helps keep the statistics and um, of course acts and does everything else. We all do <laughs> We all do all of the stuff oh, sure. on the productions as well as the office type stuff. And you're also celebrating your 20th, 20th year, 20th anniversary. Right? Yeah, actually we're in our 21st now. This is the 21st we season. Thought maybe we could have another you know, anniversary because 21 is sort of a milestone as well. I think so. so. <laughs> we're kind it was of for making me. it last a little longer <laughs> that way. Well, you know, you also mentioned, you know, the main maintenance of the program. I mean, we were talking just a little bit before about the scripts. Uh -huh. You have 20 years worth of material. Yes, we do. And you have to have it somewhere, and it's cataloged, and you draw on it. Yeah. Because what are you struggling with right now? Yet I always <laughs> feel compelled to write new stuff. New stuff, <laughs> right. right. Well, because, you know, and it's interesting, because... We can write new stuff because some issues change, mm -hmm. but we can always use the old stuff, unfortunately, because a lot of the issues remain the same. Anything we've got about stigma is I, still I relevant today. Say, yeah. And yeah. we can do a skit from 1989 without editing it and have it still be relevant today. So there's some ways that, that we haven't gotten to all the community that we need to yet. I think that's um, absolutely true. But we, we'll, we'll do them as long as we need to. And we'll keep creating new material to keep up with the times and with the way the system's changing, because <coughs> it has, it, you know, has yeah, changed I was just going to say, as the system changes, too, it mm -hmm. probably provides for material yes. or new ideas, right? Sure. Okay. Yep. What would be... I always um, take a pen to a management council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> do they know that you They have a fabulous sense of humor <laughs> about it. Do they know that? Yeah, they, they do. do. I mean, okay. they'll, they'll look at me and I'll say, yep, I'm writing a skit about you, you know, and they laugh. The, the state funds us. They're our yeah. primary target. But what we're doing is saying the things that the higher you get up the political ladder that you yeah. no longer have permission to say. <laughs> so I think sometimes people are grateful that we can say it. Right. Um, we're saying simple things. We're, we're reminding people of what um, people receiving services need. Yeah. You know, here's what's not happening. Here's That's what's not true. filtering Good. down to the people who are receiving the services. Good. Because there's a gap, you know, and the higher you oh, yeah. get up. Oh, no, there, there is. It's I easy think, to forget. It, well, it's that ability to just speak freely because the, the majority of the population that is listening to someone who is saying something, you know, by the book or um, absolutely scripted, if to use that term, and then you're at home thinking, well, that's not the way it happens. That's right. not really the way it works. This is what we should be doing, and yet there's a vehicle where someone could be um, vocal about it yeah. in a fun way. Absolutely. You know, and in a way that um, gets that message across. A lot of what um, theater's been doing throughout the ages, mm -hmm. and you've taken it to a different format with a yeah. specific population that has yeah. a wonderful voice. Now. I try to stick with the emperor's new clothes approach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, we're naive, but we actually see what's happening and sure. we're going to say it because we're still naive enough to not know that we're not supposed to be telling the truth. Um, I really insist on telling the truth and being authentic. And I think that you have to have that to heal. Right. And in a large system, it is so difficult to find people who are still being authentic. Mm -hmm. So, Is there a hot topic at the moment? I mean, we mentioned stigma, topic. which is always Stigma's something always good to come topic. back. Hot topic. Anything in the legislature? Anything that's oh, going on Oh boy, topically? I feel how I could be so politically incorrect right now. I'm thinking you could maybe do a sketch, a sketch about housing and lack thereof. And well, yeah, stuff that's like definitely that. in there. Housing, lack thereof. Um, also, when there are some interesting, um, I want to be careful how I say this because I love how the state is focusing on recovery now. Yes. And um, I also see some of the ways that the recovery model is being applied in a way that is not helping people. Ah. And so we're talking about that some. And, and it's that same thing I was talking about, about from down here. It looks different from, you know, when you're wearing a suit and you're using the language, but you're having to be politically correct, which is not authentic. Mm -hmm. And you need to be real. But it also gives you know. a voice, and I'm, I'm sure you might agree, to a lot of the people that are actually experiencing what the programs are right. helping them with or yeah. what kind of treatment they're receiving. I think some of the best changes that we've had uh, have been initiated from our consumer population. Yes. Where they're saying, you know, this is how I'm being treated, how I feel, 
and what I think might be best yeah. for me and for yeah. my treatment. So. Yeah, what we're seeing is some of the middle steps in the recovery process being yeah. skipped over, and um, really trying to bring people back into focus about that. Well, you that's can't, great. you know, you can't go from here to here without somebody helping you in the middle to build skills that you need to do what you want to do. Taking one step at, at a time. time. Right. There you go. Hey, very good. <laughs> good I like segue. That. I'd love to show a little bit of a clip, and uh, Rob is ready to give oh, us uh, a bit of a uh, teaser with some of the production that you brought with you today. Okay. And. Uh, what is it that we're looking at? Is this current material? This is actually um, footage from our 20th anniversary show that we had at the Eugene O'Neill last August. Oh, that's a riot. Oh, and this is a scene from Dysfunction Junction. Dysfunction Junction. A dysfunction Junction. What's your function? Uh, <laughs> to be dysfunctional right there, to expose dysfunction. Um, actually, the Dysfunction Junction skits are... We've had a bunch of them, and it's... Oh, it, my gosh. It is. Yeah. And here you like, come. There I come, yeah. Oh, what's, what scene is this? What are we doing? Well, right now we're just dancing. <laughs> um, the Dysfunction Junction skits, just like in this one, Nettie, who's, uh, we've had an AA meeting, mm -hmm. Dysfunction Junction AA meeting, where they have to have moonshine because if they didn't have alcohol, nobody would come. We do, you know, <laughs> Dysfunction Junction is where the opposite thing happens of okay. what should be happening. So. There's a lot of material there. There's a lot of material there. I see you have a nice little uh, persuader on your lap there. Yes, a nice persuader. I had lots of uh, persuaders in this particular show, but um, that's how I get my point across and get things done, as this character of Nettie is I see. with my special. <laughs> you know, and you have to appreciate, too, with the, the ability to uh, convey all this good material, and you have basic sets, a mm -hmm. lot of fun. You mentioned to me you need a 20 by 20 space to do a production. To do a touring show, yeah, a 20 by 20 space, and that's because we live behind the backdrops. When we do a touring show, right. we're very self-contained. Okay. And so all of our backstage is behind a curtain and our props and everything. We come out and do everything. On a touring show, we are the actors and the backstage crew and the sound man and, you know, the roadies. We do everything. And it's all by volunteer. Um, yeah, it's all, all part, people in the yeah, troop. Yeah, are doing it. Wow. Yeah, that is one. Even and so this comes back to a very basic thing about how how um, the social rehab works. Mm -hmm. For instance, on a touring show, you might not even think about this, but you have to organize all of the props and costumes that are going to go. You have to pick that stuff up and carry it out to the van so you've got physical activity mm -hmm. that sometimes is more than people are getting. I remember when I started, it was more activity than <laughs> I was getting, you know, hauling stuff to the van, and you have to mobilize yourself to do it. So, for example, for people who are depressed, mm -hmm. mobilizing your energy is really hard to do. That's when right. you practice doing that over and over, because there are only eight of you, and if you don't all participate, the stuff's not going to get in the van, you do it. You find it somewhere inside. And once you've started mobilizing your energy, you can use that in other areas of your life. So that's, um, that's a the, way the from, from the bottom up. Yes. Of what this is uh, instilling in all the participants right. to get involved and have a good time. And help each other. And, and learn and grow new skills and discover them for yourself. Yes, right. exactly. Before we go to break, why don't you give us the uh, specifics to how to contact you. I want to get it in at least once before the break. Okay. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can mm -hmm. call me at 860-887-0014. Uh, ask to speak to Becca. Or we have a website you could check out, which is www.artreachheals.org. Okay. And we have a lot of photos on that website and uh, calendar of events. Wonderful. So. Okay. Well, let's go to break. And we'll be right back talking more with Becca Atkins with Second Step Players. A lot more fun to look at. Be right back. And there's our second. Of, of the I didn't know we could. If you don't know where you are, it's difficult to get somewhere else. There are resources available to find an alternative to improve the quality of your life, to restore dignity and a sense of purpose. For people interested in living their lives more effectively and with greater satisfaction, call the regional hotline and discover information available to you, 1-888-447-3339. I'm a sophomore in college this year. Man, if you had known me when I was a sophomore in high school, 
Nobody could tell me anything. I gave all my teachers a bad time. They all give up on me, except my English teacher. Eight years teaching high school English, 10 years in recovery for alcohol addiction. To be or not to be? I got help. That's it right there. When you get help, who knows just who you'll help along the way. For drug and alcohol information and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Welcome back to the second half of To Your Health. I have a wonderful conversation with Becca Atkins. She's the director of Second Step Players. It's a rehab-focused, driven theater group out of Norwich. And Correct. what was the name of the agency again? Artreach Incorporated. Artreach Incorporated. And that in itself is... The agency, right? Yes, it is. That, that is it. Well, the art reach encompasses uh, Second Step Players and Work Hard, Play Hard, and there's which is our about, recreation program. We want to talk program. about that, don't we? Sure, I'd love to mention that. Yeah. Um, that program is for um, people who are needing to get out of the house, needing to uh, meet people and get out, but not quite ready to make the investment that it takes mm -hmm. to be in Second Step Players. Second Step Players is hard. There's a lot of work. Um, and before that, sometimes people just need, uh, you know, a friend or somebody to go to the movies with. Right. And that's what Work Hard, Play Hard does, is okay. go to movies, they go bowling. A lot of people are really good at bowling uh, now. Yeah, we have a big bowling <laughs> you know, group here too, Mary, yeah. don't we? <laughs> in our recovery and wellness program mm -hmm. here in Torrington, we have a lot of classes like that that are oh, just yeah. as uh, inviting and uh, engaging to get people mm -hmm. out and involved, in, especially with other people. Out and involved is so important. Yeah, definitely. So. And then you, we also want to talk about music. Yes, um, part of our part of the year, we do um, a project called the Come Together Coffee House, mm -hmm. and that means that from January to till May, April or May, um, we're working on music because a lot of people don't want to act; they want to be a rock star. Ah. So um, <laughs> we have a wide variety of music from gospel to folk to rock, you know, Green Day, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, people pick a song and we have two bands and we work it up with the band and then we do a big old coffee house thing and make tacos and cookies. Wow. And the music part of the year is we do it in the winter and I find that that's a good thing because a lot of people have seasonal affective disorder. It's harder to um, pull it up to do things like theater, but the music is a little bit it's harder in some ways to put together, easier in others. Individually, it's easier. People work on their one song, but they they come and stay with the group for the three-hour rehearsal. Um, and you they know, can you know, work I'm, on an open art studio at the same time. I, I just wanted to ask, too, in the respect of the respect for the participants, Yes. You're, you're, when you're in front of a group like that, mm -hmm. and this is just purely from a production standpoint, the show is put together mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Yeah. You have a program. You have people that are involved. Talent. Do you guys have a certain? I mean, is it instilled a sense of how they want to present themselves to as performers? Do Do you feel that that's being created in what you're doing too? You know how they want to put their best foot forward for taking that mm. second step. They want to be. Yeah. They want to do their song the best. Yeah. They want to be funny. Mm -hmm. They want to sing well. Do you see that being created within what you're doing? Somewhat. I, I see people looking for personal best, and it changes a lot. Their concept of their own personal best, yeah. the bar gets raised every year. Really? And, uh, yeah. You see the most dramatic improvement in someone um, in the first year that they're in Second Step Players. People come in and they stay, sometimes yeah. for 10, 15, well, sure, 20, 20 years. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, the, the most dramatic change is usually within the first year or two because that's when the initial terror is. Um, you're, you know, you're not used to acting or singing, and it takes practice, but once you've gotten the basics down, yeah. um, then you realize you can do a little more. And a lot of the time, people who come in thinking they can't act mm -hmm. or have a speaking line, they'll come in just to do props, and that's important too. You, know, you have to move the props on and off the stage. The next year, they might want one speaking line. Then they start on a bigger part, right. you know, and they're capable of doing more because they get the whole, the big picture. Once you get the big picture down, you can grow into it very well. Who comes to mind when you think of someone who's really grown like that? Who's really grown? Do uh, you mean a name of somebody who's working yeah, in the truth? I mean, how, give us an example. How, what did you see Okay, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a 
there was a woman who came in a few years ago who only wanted to come in and do a song in the coffee house. Very shy about it. She wanted a lot of support, you know, mm. somebody to stand right by her and sing the song with her. Um, and she liked being around the people so much that she did the O'Neill show with us next. Uh -huh. And she came in and just had uh, maybe one or two speaking lines in that one. And she liked that a lot, and she realized she was kind of good at it. Um, she learned how to learn her lines. Mm -hmm. And then she decided she wanted to tour with us. That's really kind of an intimate thing. You wind up in the van for hours and hours. There's a lot of work. She toured with us. I found out that she was extremely articulate, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't know about her to begin with. But at the end of our touring shows, we speak about symptoms and how the process that we're doing is helping. Mm -hmm. And she blew my mind when she started talking about it because she was very articulate. And it meant so much to her, more than I knew until I heard her speak Look about it. And um, this year, um, she sang the song pretty much by herself. We backed her up, but she was out there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, she, you know, she's just, she's forming more about what she can do. Her skills are growing, her uh, level of terror. This is someone who had a severe anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. and she uh, no longer fits the criteria and is fond of saying that. Look at that. Because she was told that. She doesn't fit the criteria anymore. But, you know, I think that that's yeah. marvelous. Yeah, you know, she, it's fabulous. She has embraced this program. She really got involved in it. She has a good time with it. And she's, she's using it to the best of oh, her yeah. ability. So, yeah. you know. What a success story. Oh, well, yeah. that's excellent. There good, are lots of those. Good for her. Lots. Yeah. I, I can imagine the, uh, the amount of people that um, over the years you've been involved with mm -hmm. must be in the hundreds at this point. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. And well, some only sing, some only act, some only do backstage crew. But you know. What would you hope this, now it's the 21st year, other than finding some new material, uh -huh. yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. And, and maybe some funding, I don't know. Uh -huh. What would you hope for Second Step Players to evolve mm. and grow on its own? What, what do Second Step Players have to reach for? That's a good question, and it's an interesting question. Uh, people are always sort of wanting us to grow and change to something different. I'm uh, not a how to build a better birdhouse yeah. kind. Uh, what I like to do is, within what we already do, yeah. make it more effective, make um, everybody's growth important, and make sure that we're making room for everybody to participate in other ways. Like, I like having other people contribute to the writing. Mm -hmm. um, and once they've acted for a while, they get better at writing. Right. So, um, I, I admit that I'm not a grow this way person so much because when we start doing that we lose focus on the people that we've got so we like to have more people come in um, that that's what I like is to have new people come in my focus is to get some more younger folks in there uh -huh. our median age is creeping up because people come in and stay for years and years right. and now we have the young adult services sure um, and we're getting some younger people in which is really cool well so actually the the growth that you're are identifying is certainly within the program itself. Yes, it's it's all focused on the members. Yes. And it's what they I fight to stay focused on that. But that's the program. That's what you're being commissioned to do. Yes. That's the focus of yes. this program. Absolutely. That's the core value of mm -hmm. who you're serving, right. who's benefiting, who's having a good time, mm -hmm. who's learning and growing. Yep. Da, 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 da. I mean, it just mushrooms from there. So I honestly, I think your expansion is probably a lot more outward. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. um, because you are keeping it grounded yeah, and you're wanting it to grow from within mm -hmm. and look at all the good stuff you're doing. It's Thank a lot you. of fun. No, but it's, it's wonderful because you're taking a great medium and uh, you're sharing it with uh, so many other people. It's yeah. not only just education, yeah. but it's... Um, it's good education. It's growth. It it's, really is. We do, you know, we get to sneak in a lot of good community education just from the topics that we cover in oh, our absolutely. scripts. You know. Absolutely. You know, just to sneak in while we're talking, Rob, if you want to run um, another clip from their their tape, um, I don't know what else that you may have brought, but let me see it. Ooh, look something tribal here. What's going on? Oh, yes, that was from, oh gosh, what year? That's um, the healthcare jungle. The healthcare there. jungle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I can recognize a lot of our state legislators there. <laughs> there you go. They were talking about uh, no talk symptoms, first talk insurance. You oh, know. talking insurance, That's right. well, there's a jungle. Yeah, and it was a, a lot of the smaller, there was someone who winds up in this jungle trying to find services, but all of the smaller services have closed down. They've all lost their funding. So 
Uh, what a great <laughs> They're idea. getting shuffled from one place to the next. Oh, look at the bone. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> now, this is a good example, too, of within the skit, um, there's, there's a gentleman in there who uh, has a harder time speaking. Yeah. And so we find places to put him because visually he's a riot, and he knows how to work visually to get the laughs. Uh -huh. um, very smart guy. He just has difficulty literally speaking. So we find places to put people based on what they're um, able Strength to do. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's very strengths-based, our program. There's a lot more behind what you're doing than meets the eye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it really does. I, I yeah. think if you want to even throw it into a clinical sense of recognizing people's strengths, capitalizing on them, because that's a comfort level yeah. for them to springboard off and develop new ones. Well, you know, a, a carefully uh, guarded secret is that I'm also a psychotherapist. Uh -huh. So I absolutely do not practice psychotherapy at Second Step Players. Mm -hmm. But you know you can't be a therapist without be, being aware of what's going on around you. And so, yeah. you know, that, I think, you're I think right. that helps. I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> so. You know, it's before we wrap up here, I just want to make sure, again, let's uh, give the number. The number is 860 Eight eight seven zero zero one four. I'll okay. be happy to talk to you on the phone. Right. My email address is second step players at sbcglobal.net, and our website is www.artreachheels.org. Marvelous. And uh, just to reiterate, our hotline number here at Northwest Mental Health Authority is one eight 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 four four seven three 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 nine, or you can call the local number at four eight two. 1560, and that's the local number for the regional hotline. We could offer some support. We can offer some guidance. We can offer some information for like Second Step Players. Ooh, and like our show dates. Oh, we, should, oh, we could. Are there O'Neill show? Upcoming Aug August show 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Eugene okay. O'Neill Theater in Waterford. Oh, righty. And then. you just call that number 887 Is there admission for information? Fee? There is. Good. Off the top of my head, I'm not remembering what it is. Well, whatever it is. it is, I'm sure it's worth it. Yes, it definitely <laughs> is. It all goes back into props and costumes. And that's another, <laughs> that's another good point, that you do, um, you are available to do shows for other people. And yes. There's a, there's a fee. Sometimes yes. it's uh, orchestrated with where you're going. Mm -hmm. And that money gets re goes right back into, into the, the show agency. and yeah. the agency, and it just fosters new growth, new ideas. To pay people for meals when we go on the tour. Oh, my you gosh. Know. Great. Hey, parting remark. What's a last parting remark, a thought? Parting remark. What does Becca have to say? Uh, Second step players is? Uh, creativity heals. That's our motto. Creativity it's because creativity heals. heals. That is and wonderful. it does. It does because you create connections. And making connections with other people, finding support, that's how you heal. That's great. So that's really good. Learning to take it in. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, that is very true. There's that? the trick. Yeah. So. Well, I hope you had some uh, ideas for material from this oh, yeah, experience. We can make a good comedy skit out of this. <laughs> uh, we don't have a blooper reel, do we, Mary? We should maybe start one. I, oh, I, I bloopers are the best. I think so. The things yeah. that go wrong make the best stories. Oh, nothing ever goes wrong on this show, does it, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can knock something over. No, <laughs> that's okay. It's all breakable. But I want to thank you very much. It's for nice to meet honest. you. So thank you for making the trek oh, all the way sure. up from Norwich. It's great. Uh, thank you for bringing the clips. And uh, hopefully someday we'll get you to do a performance in our area. That would, that would be, be great. really, really great. I want to thank you for watching our ninth season of To Your Health. I'm Mark Travella. We'll see you next time. And this was great.
I am Mark Travell, and welcome to To Your Health. This is our ninth season. We're, the show is produced by the Northwest Mental Health Authority here in Torrington, Connecticut, and we're uh, having a wonderful conversation right now with Dr. Andrew Winnegar from the University of Connecticut. He's a uh, researcher 